Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's a pretty big day because I'm gonna complete what I believe is the last fabrication on the Turbo 8.1 project. It's been a long time, I checked it out. Um, the first upload I did on the Turbo Kit was back in the middle of October, so a little bit over two months of on and off fabrication work to get this thing done. We've had a lot of challenges along the way from building a manifold that'll actually fit to placing the turbo, to mounting the intercooler, to building a four inch downpipe that clears the frame, to mounting the intercooler and building a three and a half inch charge pipe. And the very last thing that we've got to do is get the wastegate recirculated into the downpipe. Now, a couple of videos ago, I showed you guys how to get the pipe coped up to fit around the curve, but the last thing I was waiting on was the little flex bellows that's gonna allow for just a little bit of thermal expansion and movement between the two pipes. And that just showed up right here. This is a vibrant performance piece. It's made from stainless steel and it's got a little, uh, I don't know what you call it, a little sleeve in there. So it has a nice smooth flow, but it'll still allow for, you know, just a little bit of flex. I'm not gonna start off the day doing that though, because it's cold outside, number one. Number two, it's about to rain and it's supposed to be kind of rainy slash snowy all weekend. And number three, I need to take care of some maintenance on the daily driver, the 2020 GMC AT4 HD. Now I've had that truck for a little bit over a year. I bought it in September of 2019. It's got, I think 31,000 miles on it right now. It's been a great truck, but it's time for an oil change. So I got it warming up outside right now. Um, it's, I think, 36 degrees outside. I might have said that already, but I want to get a little bit of temperature in the oil because this 1540, it doesn't like to drain. Now I've got on the banks thing right here, right here, that's oil temp. It's 102 degrees oil temperature right now. So I think I'll let it warm up just for a little while longer, another minute or two, then I'll drain it out. As far as what's going back in, uh, just a Delco filter and some generic uh, Costco brand oil. So we'll get that knocked out, then we'll get back to welding. Well, it's a simple job, but that wraps up the maintenance on the daily driver. Now, there's a couple questions you guys have been asking me about the L5P. And the first one is, when are you gonna put the good tires back on? And the second one is about future plans for the truck. Now, as far as the tires are concerned, uh, I've got a set of 35, 12, 50, 20 Ridge Grapplers right there. And they're on a bronze 20 by 10 method. I think it's a 605. I love how it looks on the truck, but about a month and a half ago, uh, we were going on a road trip to Colorado and it's like a nine hour drive from where we're at. And those Ridge Grapplers use a lot more fuel than the stock tires do. So I just figured the stock ones, they burn less fuel and they're a lot quieter for the long road trip. So I just figured I'd swap them out. Now the plan was just to swap the good tires back on as soon as I got back to the house, but you guys know how that goes. I just never got around to it. Plus I'm enjoying the better fuel mileage as well. I think on that trip, I got even going like 80, 85 miles an hour. I think I got like 21 miles to the gallon. So that was an added bonus and I think well worth the effort. But I'll put them on, I don't know, sometime soon. Maybe I'll wait till spring until all the snow is gone. We'll see. Now the second question about modifying the truck. Right now it's mostly, or basically it is stock. It's got a resonator delete. I custom built the intake tube and then it's got a Banks Derringer on it which is an inline tuner per se, and it adds about 80 horsepower and I think another 140 pounds of torque is what they're rated at. I love the Derringer, it's a great tuner, but I still would love to do a full ECU tune. But if you guys know anything about the L5P, 
you know how much of an expense and how much of a hassle that can be. And I'd love to get it a little bit further out of the warranty period before I get into any of that business. But let me know down in the comments below if you guys want to see more diesel content. If you like diesel trucks, just help me feel out my audience. Help me, let me know what you guys like and what you're into. Um, I'd love to have a big set of compounds on that truck someday. And, you know, I'd love to take it down to Mexico and have all those extra parts in the exhaust fall off. But like I said, that's a project for another day. But do let me know what you think. For now, we're going to move on to Ugly Truck. And I showed you what the plan was for today. I'm going to get the wastegate recirculated into the downpipe. This is the pipe I made earlier. It took forever to get this cope right here because it goes from one curved pipe into another. But this right here is the piece of the puzzle that we're waiting on, a nice little slip coupler. So let's get to it. With a quick trim to length on the chop saw and a little bit of cleanup work, the dump tube is now ready to be tack welded together to the bellows. But first I wanted to show you guys just a little bit of information about the TIG torch that I use and how I set it up differently for welding different materials. Now all last week I was welding the aluminum charge pipes and to do that I just run the standard uh, collet body or the standard nozzle that comes with most TIG torches. Now this is a number 17 torch, it's a flex head. And here's the collet body. There's just a little hole right there, and that's where the gas flows through. Now, of course, it's directed through a ceramic nozzle, kind of like that. But basically, the shielding gas just kind of comes out there. But the problem is, the way it exits, it's, it's a little bit turbulent, and it doesn't have a very smooth flow or a very large coverage area. And that's just dictated by the diameter of the nozzle on the end there. Now, you gotta use the AC process for welding aluminum, and the AC process does generate a lot more heat on the torch side of things. And as such, you can't use, or it's recommended that you don't use uh, a gas nozzle when you're welding aluminum. And this right here, this is a stubby gas lens kit. This is for the number 17 torch. And it's made up of a couple parts. You've got kind of the first little plastic washer spacer there, a shorter collet, this right here, this is the gas lens, and you can kind of see the little screen there. That's what helps direct the gas flow out. And then you've got the cup. I've got two different ones here. This is a monster number 12. You can see the little screen in there. And that's a number 16 there. That's a little bit bigger, and I don't really ever use that unless I'm doing something super, super high end and I want to have a ton of gas coverage. For me, no, the Monster Number 12 works really good for most stainless stuff, uh, especially if you back purge along the way. So anyway, um, DC welding, you can use, or it's very easy to use a, a gas lens kit. Welding aluminum with AC, it's just recommended that you don't, again, because so much heat comes back up into the torch and you could probably melt and damage some of those little finer parts like the screen. So anyway, I'll get my torch swapped over real quick, then I'll get to tack welding.
Welding the dumb tube into the downpipe, it went really smoothly and I'm happy with how it's looking. And I mostly attribute that to how much time I spent on the prep stage getting the dump tube fit up perfectly onto the downpipe. Now sure, I just could have cut it at any old shape and taken the MIG welder and just blasted the two together and it would have worked just fine, but that doesn't fit with my philosophy. Now this might sound a little bit cheesy or corny or you know, unnecessary even, but my whole thought is if you're gonna take the time to build or to fabricate, to build something with your own two hands, take the time to do it to the very best of your ability even if it takes a little bit more time because the finished products, I think they'll always speak for themselves. Now, I almost think this is probably one of the best looking stainless parts that I've done in a long time. And sure, I'm not the best welder in the world. I don't claim to be. And I know there's a lot of welders out there that'll look at that and think, oh man, that looks like trash. But for me, I put 100% in and I'm happy with that. So we talked earlier about TIG torches and gas lenses, and this is another situation where a gas lens can work to your advantage because there's not a lot of space in between these two pipes and that cup will take up a lot of space. So you need to run more stick out to be able to weld down in that area. And with a regular uh, nozzle, you can't really do that. But with a gas lens, normally I'm welding somewhere around right in there, about three quarters of an inch of stick out. But the great thing about a gas lens is it directs the gas flow perfectly down and it kind of just creates a column of gas around the tungsten. So you can run an inch and a half or two inches of stick out if you need to, to be able to get down in a tight spot like that. I usually do crank up the argon flow a little bit more, um, but that's like I said, the great thing about a gas lens. So if you're going to do any sort of TIG welding, I highly recommend it. Now let's get the downpipe back into the truck for the very last time. That officially wraps up all the fabrication on the turbo kit for the 8-1 swap Silverado 1500. Now, I'm super happy with how this thing has turned out. Honestly, it looks so much cooler than anything I ever could have imagined when I started out on this project. Now, we'll see if it actually performs as good as it looks, but some specifics for you guys who might just be tuning in for the first time. This is a bone stock junkyard takeout 8.1. Haven't even touched the ring gap yet. And we're just gonna run it on low boost, keep that wastegate open until we do get a chance to build the motor, which will probably happen early next year. I did throw on the air filter just to kind of give it a finished look. And I also installed the stock narrow band O2 sensor down there in the downpipe. Now, in one of the coming uploads, we'll install the wide band right in there. And there's a few other things I'll show you guys along the way. We're gonna throw some 1000 cc injectors in. Uh, 450 fuel pump in the tank, tuning will convert to speed density. I'll show you some of the steps along the way there. And then once we finally get all that stuff going, then we can finally get it out on the road and see if it'll still burn the tires. Now, I wanna say thank you guys for watching to the end. I appreciate it, I really do. If you like this content, help me out and subscribe because we're trying to get to 30,000 subs by this end of this year. Now also, don't forget to drop a comment down below and let me know what else you'd like to see. If you like content like this, you know, heavy fabrication work, if you want to see what's next on the OBS Suburban project or more stuff on the 2020 AT4. Either way, let me know what you think. I'm happy to hear from you. Thanks for watching. I'm LT.